Purchasing Power Parity. The Purchasing Power Parity compares the price of trade between two countries using a basket of goods and services, which is a group of similar items that are frequently purchased by consumers. By comparing the prices of a basket of items, theoretically, it can be determined if prices and therefore currency strength is too high or too low in a country. If prices are lower in a country, the currency will rise in value as money flows into the country from countries with higher prices. If prices are higher in a country, the currency will drop in value as money flows out of the country into countries with lower prices. There are several versions of the purchase power parity. Some models take into account not only real price differences, but also income levels, inflation levels, and cost of living. The goal is to try to compare not only what the basket of items costs in real conversion rates, but what it costs compared to what people can really afford to buy. Let's look at a specific example. Let's say the exchange rate from yen to dollars is 90 yen per dollar. Let's also say that a widget costs $20 in the US, but in Japan it costs 900 yen. This means in US dollars, the widget costs $20 in the US, but it costs only $10 in Japan. Since the, since the widget is half the price in Japan than it is in the US, people would rather buy the widget from Japan. This means that the demand for goods for widgets would rise in Japan, causing the price of widgets to rise in Japan. This also means the demand for widgets from the US would fall, causing the price of widgets in the US to drop. More demand for widgets in Japan would mean that, as people buy more widgets in Japan, more currency is being exchanged from other currencies into yen, causing yen to rise in value. Less demand for widgets in the U.S. mean that, as less people are buying widgets in the U.S., less foreign currency is being exchanged into dollars, causing the U.S. dollar to fall in value. While a single item probably has little, if any, real effect on the exchange rate between two currencies, if the overall trade cost is cheaper for one place than another, it is extremely logical to assume that the country with cheaper prices will see an increase of trade and therefore will see the value of their currency rise, and the country with more expensive prices will see trade decline and therefore the value of their currency will fall in value. There are several variations of the purchasing power parity, including the Big Mac Index. Instead of a basket of goods, the Big Mac Index compares the price of a Big Mac from country to country as an indicator of the level of cost per country. If the Big Mac costs more in a country, theoretically the prices and in turn the currency is overpriced and the currency should drop in value over time. If the price of a Big Mac costs less in a country, theoretically the prices and in turn the currency is underpriced and the currency should rise in value over time. It is interesting to note that when comparing a Big Mac index to the actual purchasing price parity chart, they are strikingly similar. Like all economic theories, the purchasing power parity has its problems. The first is that it is difficult to find a set of items to compare prices between countries because people in different countries typically consume different goods. The second reason is that it is difficult to compare real purchasing power between countries due to the vast number of factors that affect real purchasing power. The third is that this is a longer term theory it could take several years for a currency to react to price differences. In the shorter term, it is easy to find examples where the purchase power parity does not work. And if that's not enough, the purchasing power parity also assumes free trade is in place and does not take into account things like taxes, tariffs, or quotas. So that's the purchasing power parity. In my next video, I'll cover another model that is based in part on the purchase power parity, the monetary model. See you then.